Good morning, everyone. We are the group number five. Please welcome all of you uh, to our presentation. We are going to present the chapter number three and number four. Before moving on to the main part, let me introduce ourselves first. Uh, our group has six members, including me, Thuy Huynh, Huynh Mai, An Thư, Phương An, Bích Xuân, and Thu Phương. And we will start with chapter number three, Perception. So chapter three will consist of three parts. One, sensation, two, three state of perceptual process, and final, semi audit My name is Phương An, and I will talk about back one, sensation. The marketing industry is always trying to come up with new products, with commercial methods, which are designed carefully to make our day. But because there's too much of them, we're overwhelmed and they become useless because they can't influence us. Our sense play an important role in how we see the world. There are two definitions I want to introduce. All the responses of our sensory report receptor, such as eyes, ear, nose, mouth, skin, to basic stimulate such as light, texture, style, order, and texture are regarded as sensation. Perception is the process by which people select, organize, and interpret these sensations. So, how can many will do when it comes to sensory marketing? Let's start with vision. An outstanding packaging design will attract customer attention and make them want to buy it. Color can be this Consider the more vital factor. Depending on different elements, color may influence our emotion differently. Each color will have its own application. The tech of marketer is to cl clarify their brand style and convey it to packaging design. In the long run, color can become a part of company trade thread. Then, scent can call up memory and directly affect feeling. It is reported that different order can make customer want to try different alternatives within its product category. Some retailers even fill this store with some signature saying and achieve a higher rate of customer coming back. An expression can affect the way we experience immediate emotion. They can be used to arouse specific feelings. So, there are many aspects of self relevant to marketers. Brand can use audio watermarking to encourage the retention of message and self symbolism as a way to influence brand image with self. Pranim can even influence how we feel about sight. Touch, basically, we are more sure about what we perceive if we can touch it. And research has shown that when consumers touch a product, they have a higher level of attachment to that product and more willing to pay for it. Touch can even influence sale interaction. Taste, a food image and value will attach to it, influence how it spirals the actual say. For example, people will think that potato chip with a louder print tastes better. Our brain receives external stimuli or sensory input on a number of channels, and marketer methods are more effective when they appeal to several senses. Therefore, marketer try to depend to create a brain sensory system for a competitive advantage. My name is Tu Fung, and I'm going to talk about stages of perception. And this process has three stages, exposure, um, attention, and, and interpretation. So stage one, exposure. And this occurs when your ears catch a sound or your mouth tastes some food. And here are also some key concepts I want to talk about. The first one is sensory threshold. And this is the point where a stimulus is strong enough to make us aware. And next is absolute threshold. And it means that the minimum amount of stimulation a person can detect, for example, a sound of that is actually beyond our absolute threshold. Next is differential threshold, and it means the ability of sensory system to detect changes in between two stimuli and the minimum difference we can detect called GMD. And here you can see um, when a company wants to modernize their logo, they want to keep to make the logo new so they can keep their consumers interested, but not too new that the consumers cannot recognize the logo. And finally is Weaver's Law. So uh, the stronger the initial stimulus, the greater a change must be for us to notice. So that's why there are, sometimes there are advertisements between movies. Next, I'm going to talk about subliminal perception. 
and it is a stimulus below the level of consumer awareness. And there is virtually no proof that this has any effect on the consumer behavior. Um, still, many people believe that this somehow manipulates them into buying things that they don't want to buy. And there are also things called invest, and there are tiny features inserted into magazine advertising via high speed photography or airbrushing, and they must be sexual nature. And it uh, supposedly influences innocent readers. And that's not the best way to get our attention because it can only be effective on small portions of consumers. And if they actually can get our attention, it might only increase the basic drive and not the product itself. Next one is day two attention, and it is the extent to which processing activity is devoted to a particular stimulus. And here are also some key concepts I want to talk about. The first one is sensory overload. So we are continuously exposed to much more information that we can actually actually process. That's why marketers have to break through the clutter to grab our attention, which leads to rich media. And here are some examples of that. And after that, because our brain cannot hold much information, we're going to choose what to pay attention to, uh, which depends on personal selection factors. So if stimuli relate to current needs, perceptual vigilance happens. And if stimuli is um, threatened in some way, perceptual defense will happen. And finally, um, customer may adapt to stimulus because they are so familiar and marketers have uh, need stronger dose to get their attention by uh, intensity, discrimination, exposure, or relevance. And next is stimulus selection factors. So these are characteristic of the stimulus that can actually enhance the possibility of us noticing the stimulus. Um, they are size, color, precision, and novelty. So the last stage is interpretation. So th this refers to the meanings we assign to the sensory stimuli. So um, to sum it up, some events with different people will have different interpretation due to the culture or language, etc. Also, products often assume a brand personality, so brands can do the image to shape the consumer mind. And next is stimulus organization, and it's very different um, based on our past experience. And also, we don't attend to a stimulus in isolation, so we actually organize it according to principle. So here, the Gestalt perspective will guide these principles. The first one is the closure principle, which means that we will automatically fill in the blanks. That's why we don't have much trouble reading signs that have lots of few words. The next one is the similarity principle, which means that we will group objects that are similar to each other. And the final one is the figure ground principle, which means that one part of the stimuli will be the figure and the other is going to be in the background. And a lot of companies use this in their logo, like FedEx or Amazon. And that's it for this part. Uh, moving on to the next part by Tweekun. So I will continue with part number three, semiotics, to help them understand how consumers interpret the meaning of symbol, so marketing turn to the semiotic, a study of correspondence between sign and symbol, and their role in how we assign a meaning. Semiotic is also a key link to consumer behavior. Every marketing message has three basic components, an object, a sign, and an interpretance. An object is a product that is the focus. A sign is a sensory image that represents the uh, intended meaning, and the interpretance is the meaning uh, we describe to the, min to the sign. For Mar Malaro cigarette, the cigarettes are the products. The symbol is the cowboy, which can be interpre interpreted to mean Red America. According to Charles Sander Peer, sign related to the object is one of three ways. They can resemble objects, connect to them, or tie them conventionally. An icon is a sign that resembles the product in some way. An index is a sign that connects to the products because they share some property. And the symbol is a sign that relates to the product, uh, a conventional, and agree on association. For example, uh, barking and drawing a dog instead of giving them the real dog to understand the icon. Uh, the index is the smell or smoke indicate the nearby fire and the symbol is the, the uh, example of the traffic line. There is no in inheritance between the idea of red and the fact that we should stop and the color green and the fact that we should go. Other than as a society, over many years we declined that they should mean that. 
A lot of time, though, the money going to uh, creating brand name and logo that's clearly communicate to the product image. Emojis are the small digital icon, the latest kind of symbolism that capturing the imagination of the consumer. The image allows sender to express feelings and communicate with those who don't speak <coughs> our language. Hyper reality. Uh, advertisers create new relationship between objects and interpretants when we invent connection between products and benefits. In a hybrid environment, over time, it's no longer possible to discern the true relationship between the symbol, the, the symbol and reality. Disneyland is a great, a great example. Disneyland works in a system that enable visitors to feel the technologies and create atmosphere. How? And next, we will move to perceptual positioning. Our perception of a brain can drive its functional attributes and its symbolist attributes. This meaning create the product market's position and is made more to do with our expectation of product's performance by color, packaging, and styling. And positioning strategies is when a company choose one or two important key areas to concentrate on, consider the strength and weaknesses of the organization, the needs of the consumer, uh, the market and the position of the competitors. Marketer can use many dimensions to carve out the brand positions, include lifestyle, price, leaderships, attribute, products, class, competitors, occasion, users, and quality. Now we'll move into the next part. So we come to chapter number four, learning and memory. And in this chapter, there are three ob objectives. Uh, and then we start with the first one, conditioning, resilient learning. So how do we learn? Learning is an ongoing process. It consists of permanent changes, behavior, custom experience. Incidental learning is a swarm of learning in which a person has no intention to learn. It's a belief that the effect of many commercials and advertisement is considered to be the result of this type of learning. So there are two important theories of learning, behavioral theories and cognitive theories. And I will start with the first one, behavioral learning theories. So this theory argues that learning takes place as a result of responses to the external events. People also learn that the action they take result in rewards or punishment. And two major approaches to this theory are classical conditioning and instrumental conditioning. Now let's start with the classical conditioning. It occurs when a stimulus that elicits a response is paired with another one that initially does not elicit a response by itself. And over time, the second stimulus causes a similar response because of the association with the first one. So uh, about the basic concept of this theory, uh, about a rabbit Repetition is a process of repeating exposures to increase the strength of stimulus response association and to prevent the decay of them in memory. About extinction, it happens when the effects of prior conditioning weaken and finally disappear. And about stimulus generalization, it refers to the tendency of stimuli similar to the condition stimulus to evoke a similar condition responses. And the last one, stimulus discrimination, uh, occurs when the uncon unconditioned, unconditioned stimulus does not follow a, sim a stimulus similar to conditioned stimulus. When this happens, reactions weaken and will disappear. So next is some marketing application of classical condition principle. One typical way to apply this principle is to create a distinctive brand image or bring a product to an underlying need comparing nonsense syllables with such evaluative words as beauty or success, the meanings transfer to the fake word. And these associations are crucial to many strategies that rely on the creation and maintenance of brain equity. Next is marketing application of repetition. So is it argued that any more than three exposures to the marketing communication are wasted? The first the first is to create the awareness of the product. A second is to demonstrate the relevance of the product. And the, the final one is to remind consumers of the product's benefits. However, excessive amount of good things can be, can be product, counterproductive and lead to advertising where are sometimes. Uh, the next one is marketing application of condition product association. So establishing establishing a connection between the product and a positive stimulus is helpful in creating a desirable association. 
Uh, next, a, ma uh, a marketing application of stimulant generalization. So the project, the process of stimulant generalization is often central to branding and packaging decisions that capitalize on consumers' positive association with the existing brand or company name. Uh, for example, uh, this may include this may include family branding uh, when many products capitalize on the reputation of the company name. One example is uh, the Apple, where other products are marketed under the Apple brand. The next one is product life extension. It's when the marketer, marketers are related products to establish brand. For example, can get sell different types of toothpaste to intercept more consumer with different preferences. The next one is licensing. Uh, it's when the companies ran well-known names to make use of their association. An example would include a collaboration of McDonald's, Happy Meals with a uh, Disney character. And the final one is look like packaging. Other companies use the more similar brand name and use the same color of the original manufacturer to mislead the consumer. And next we will move to we will move to instrumental conditioning. It occurs when we learn to perform be, uh, be perform behaviors that produce positive outcomes and avoid those called negative outcomes. So. Uh, instrumental conditioning occurs in one of these ways. The first one, positive reinforcement, is a form of uh, is in form of complement strengthening the response. Negative enforcement also have to strengthen responses by the removal of something considered unpleasant uh, about push punishment. Occurs when the unpleasant events follow and respond, and we learn not to repeat this behavior. And final, finally, extinction occurs when the consumer no longer receives positive response and stimulus response connection we will not maintain. About some marketing application of this principle, the principle of uh, instrumental conditioning are at work when the marketers reward or punish consumer for purchase decisions. There are a number of ways to motivate uh, consumer behavior. For instance, when purchase a product from Buffett Dairy, consumer are provided with a thank you, thank you card. And frequently, marketing is a promotion strategy designed to reward regular buyers with a uh, price that get better as they uh, spend more. And finally, gamification is a process of incorporating game design element and game mechanics into existing experiences and platform. Many domains of human activity and business, and business share the common need that need to motivate people to achieve ascending levels of mastery. This includes store and brand loyalty, social marketing, and employee performance. So this is the end of uh, behavioral, behavioral learning theories. Let's move to the next one with my teammates. I am Mai, and so I will continue with the next section. We learn about products by observing others' behavior. Cognitive learning theory stress the importance of internal mentor process. This perspective views people as problem solvers who actively use information from their surroundings to master the environment. Observational learning occurs when we watch the actions of others and note the reinforcement we receive for their behaviors. People store these observations in memory and then they use this information later to guide their own behavior. When we engage with other demands, we're likely to mimic others' behaviors as a social default. Modeling is the process of imitating the behavior of others and the figure illustrated for marketers to instigate observational learning for a condition must be met. First, the consumer attention must be directed to appropriate model and that person must be someone the consumer wish to emulate. Second, the consumer must remember what the model says or does. Third, the consumer must convert this information into actions. Fourth, the consumer must be motivated to perform these actions. Marketing applications. Our ability to learn vicariously when we observe the outcomes of what others do benefits the marketers. They only need to show what happens to desirable models who use or do not use their product, as they know consumer will pick up these actions after. Consumer evaluations of people they model go beyond simple response. A person following others' behavior depends on that model level social attractiveness. Attractiveness comes from physical appearance, expertise, and similarity. How do we learn to be consumer? Consumer socialization is the process by which young people acquire skills, knowledge, and attitudes relevant to their functioning in the marketplace. It is shown that the brand preferences and product knowledge that occur in childhood continue in their adulthood. 
for the children, these are mostly provided by family and the media. Parents will introduce their ideas about consumption to their children. They also determine the degree to which the children can make contact with other information sources. Children learn about buying as they watch their parents' behaviors and imitate them. There are types of parents when interacting with the children, authoritarian parents, neglecting parents, and indulgent parents. TV and the internet. At present, kids will spend most of their time on the TV set, the computer, and their cell phones. For that, many marketers utilize advertising through these means of communications to encourage kids to build a lifelong habit. The four marketers categorize kids based on their stage of cognitive development, but now the idea of the different children at different levels in processing information or storing retrieved information from memory has been agreed. Researchers identify three development stages, limited, cued, and strategic. Message comprehension. Because children's ability to process product-related information are unequal, advertisers direct appeals to them raise many serious ethical issues. Some are concerned about having an effect on kids' healthy lifestyles. However, some says instead of keeping children away from the marketplace influences as much as possible, children should be viewed as kids' customer. And now we're moving to next part. Objective three, our brands process information of our brands to retain them in memory. Memory is the storage of learned information. Like computer function, it has input data, process, and output data for later use. The memory process comprises of encoding stage, storage, and retrieval one. In the encoding stage, our brain encoding incoming information by using three distinct memory systems, sensory memory, structural memory, and long-term memory. So how our memory store information. As the better effort it takes to process, the more likely that information will transfer into long-term memory. Here we have associative network. It contains information in the relative form next spreading activation. A marketing message may activate our memory of a brand directly or indirectly when it links to something else that related to the brand in our knowledge structure. It is activate a note. It will also activate other lead notes. The way we store depends on the types of meaning we initially assign to it. Brand specific, as specific, brand identification, product category, and evaluate reactions. Also, our brand integrate things in an even more complex unit called schema. We encode information more readily when that information is consistent with an existing schema. How we retrieve memory when we decide what to buy. Retrieval is a process whereby we recover information from long-term memory. Those, there are factors affect the likelihood that we will remember. Situational, adequate cues, spacing effect, viewing environment and nature at itself. So why do we forget? Memories fade with the passage of time, and this is the process of decay the result of interference as we learn additional. Mm, recall may also be inhibited if the brain name composed of frequently used words. Here are some ways to help us remember better. We are more likely to recall and add if our mood of level of arousal at the time of exposure is similar to that in the purchase environment. This phenomenon is called state-dependent retrieval. Familiarity and recall we have a tendency of recalling message about items we are already familiar with, about silence and recall. Stand out, unique, and novelty of a stimulus can improve recall. About viewing context, viewers remember about brands whose products were placed in the show they enjoy. About pictorial versus cues, we easily recognize information we see in picture form at the level of time, although it doesn't improve our comprehension. So how we measure consumer recall marketing message? We measure by using the impact of recognition and recall. But on the other hand, it's also a fault in measuring. It can be contaminated by response bias. Like people tend to keep yes to questions regardless of what the, the item questions they ask or they try to give a 
the response they think they are supposed to do, and suffer from memory lapse with typical problems like omitting, averaging, and telescoping. This is the last part: marketing power of nostalgia. Nostalgia describes the bittersweet emotion that arises when we view the past with both sadness and longing. Marketer introduced a brand, a retro brand, to reassure, resurrect popular character to evoke fond memory of the past. That's the end of our presentation.